call the meeting to order at what are it, 601? Okay. So hang on just a second. You gotta uh, record. We'll record it. So Tegan, um, could you record this also? Yeah. On that laptop? Uh, Recording in progress. So we're calling the meeting to order at 603. Alright. Let me put my glasses back on so I can see. Might be better if we don't see. All right. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, just that um, you know, we definitely want to talk about the uh, special town meeting for the fire station. Right, we've uh, got a petition I, for the fire department. Yep. Yeah. And then um, I hadn't heard back from Chuck, so I didn't have the town highway report on the um, agenda. I think I got onto one. So let's agenda. place it right after treasurer's report. Yes. Yep. That's a good place for it. Okay. Yep. And the special town meeting. That's um, on there. Okay. Well, it's actually, there. that was a kind of a wrap up of the special town meeting oh, that we oh, had okay. this weekend. But it, yeah, I guess it could serve both purposes. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the um, town meeting review. Okay. You want to do it all there? Sure. Okay. I think that sounds good. Yeah. I'll just make And then what else do we have? That'll all go right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any public comment? Statements of outrage or praise. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, go ahead, Robin. I would like to thank Laura and Gary Clark. Laura Murphy, that is. Oh. And Gary Clark for handling the situation that arose mm -hmm. at the special town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, bills to the town. I guess we can prove those by signing Sorry. them. I don't think any of us reviewed them yet. Oh, have we? I, I have not either. Okay. Um, and then I'll take a motion and then comments over the meeting minutes. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, motion approved by Chris. Okay. I'll second. Is there a discussion? I read them too. So okay. okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Whew, we're flying. All right. All right, so we're ready for CV Fiber presentation. That's you. All right. That's you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well enough? Can. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. My name is Jerry Diamantides. I am the chair of CV Fiber, chair of the governing board. Uh, I've been asked to uh, give a brief presentation and, and perhaps take some questions about CV Fiber, who we are and what we're doing. Okay. Uh, so let me start by saying that we are a municipal entity, a communications union district. We were created on town meeting day in 2018, where I believe it was 14 towns voted on town meeting day to create uh, the communication union district. We currently have 21 towns and Woodbury joined in 2019. Uh, we have a single goal. Our existence is for one purpose, and that is to bring fast, reliable, affordable fiber internet to the residences and businesses in our member towns. Uh, we are aiming for a minimum of 100 uh, megabits per second up and down. And that is really why we're here, why we exist. We're, we're uh, somewhat akin to the uh, electric co-ops that are the rural electric co-ops around the country in that our rural membership has been unable to be served adequately um, by the incumbent providers. And the state realized that was a problem created the opportunity for communication union districts to be formed, and, and here we are. There are now maybe, there might be as many as a dozen communication union districts in the state. Maybe it's a little less, I'm not sure the exact number. So we, as I said, we're a municipal entity, so each town provides one delegate and one alternate delegate to the governing board. So either the delegate or the alternate uh, has a vote at our board meetings. Each town has one vote then at, the, at, at our board meeting. We meet on the second Tuesday of every month as a board. 
Um, we have two delegates. We have a, a delegate and an alternate from Woodbury. Becky Browning is the delegate. Skip Lindsay is the alternate. Uh, and Becky uh, had reached out to me and asked that if, if I would um, uh, be able to, to, to attend your meeting. We have four officers, a chair, a vice chair, a treasurer, and a clerk. And we do all of our business through committees. We have an executive committee, a finance and audit committee, policy communications, and also business development committee. So we, in some ways, we run similar to a uh, to the select board. Well, I encourage everyone, please, to go to our website. It's going to be a lot more informative than me. CVFiber.net. No spaces. Just CVFiber.net. One thing that I, I I really want to emphasize here, and I think this is critically important for all select boards to to know uh, and, and to remember, and that is that no town tax money goes to the CUDs. Uh, we have no taxing authority. Uh, our revenues come from grants, loans, and subscription fees from our users. Um, so there is, there, is no, there is no town tax money uh, that, go, that goes to the CUDs. Um, I'd, I'd like to talk about Woodbury a little bit and the internet situation as we see it in Woodbury. We have 782 addresses that are listed by the uh, Public Service Department, uh, out of which no address has 100 over 100 service. So it looks like there is probably no fiber in Woodbury at all. Um, almost half the town, 48%, has 100 over 20 service, and 100 over 20 is a threshold for federal construction grant funding. Um, so approximately half of the residences, 372 or 48%, uh, appear to at, at least have, uh, on paper, 100 over 20 service. Less than 100 and over 20, and that would be eligible for current federal construction grant funding. That's 410 residences, 52%, approximately half the town. So the way we're looking at this is half the town is underserved when it, when it comes to internet, internet access. And we have some activities that are currently going on. Um, we have pre-construction engineering and design that is going on right now. Uh, you'll find that sometime this spring there will be uh, folks from Tilson Technology Management is a consulting firm that we've hired, an engineering firm, and they will be out doing a poll inventory. They'll be looking at the um, uh, utility poles in Woodbury, most of which I believe are going to be Hardwick Electric poles. They'll be looking at those poles and uh, gathering information about w what's already hanging on the poles, what are, what are the conditions of the poles, and what kind of work would be necessary for fiber construction to hang fiber on those poles. So that's going to happen this spring. We are also we have uh, hired uh, the National Rural Telecommunication Co-op, NRTC. They are doing our design, and they are uh, currently in the process of, of designing for internet service in all of our towns. And that, that design will also be completed in 2022. Right now on our schedule, um, we have construction in Woodbury slated for 2023. I don't know that it will all be completed in 2023, but that is our tentative construction start. We do not have a construction firm on board yet, um, and but we do have a service provider, and the service provider will be Waitsfield Telecom. Um, they are a... Uh, uh, a local internet service provider 
that is going to be working with three other CUDs as their service provider, uh, us, NEK, and, and uh, Maple Broadband. So moving forward, we currently have about $3 million in grant funding for pre-construction engineering and design. We've, 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 we've barely spent any of it yet. We've, we've only recently gotten that money and we've been working with our contractors to, to develop the, the plan forward through design and to get to RFPs for construction. There's approximately $9 million more available for grant funding uh, for CV fiber. We anticipate that the total project cost is going to be about 50 million. Now there is anticipated to be another round of grant funding, uh, somewhat equivalent to the 9 million we, we, I just mentioned, but that is not a certainty. Um, and we don't know when that, that may be available. And all of this is federal, federal grant funding. Um, and then we are also working with Washington Electric Co-op uh, for, for service areas that overlap with Washington Electric Co-op to potentially use a, a RUS, a USDA Rural Utility Service loan. We would, we would collaborate with WEC, um, Washington Electric Co-op, to get a low interest loan to help fund um, our, our construction. Apart from that, everything, uh, all, all of our construction has to be financed, funded through uh, the subscription fees that we, that we charge for our, for our service. And the only other opportunity that we know of right now for construction funding um, is the town ARPA funds. And I know that the, the towns are considering how to best spend those funds. Broadband is something that falls into the, one of the categories where that money can be spent. Um, I don't know if, if, if folks are aware, but there is a, uh, the, the, the Vermont uh, uh, Broadband Committee that, that was established by the uh, executive and the legislature, they, con they, will, uh, they control the dispersal of grant funds to the CUDs. And what they've done is they've held back some of these federal grant funds in order to have a matching program with town ARPA funds. So they're willing to match uh, dollar for dollar. Uh, I believe it's up to one and a half million dollars per town they're, they're, they are looking, they will match dollar for dollar for any ARPA funds that are allocated towards uh, broadband uh, construction, CUD broadband construction. Um, those funds would be used in the town. They would be, they would be allocated to construction in the town. Um, it's, it's, it hasn't been, I, I don't know that we've uh, fully negotiated yet with any town exactly um, what we would do or how we would do it with them, but this is a this is a brand new program, and if the select board is interested in getting matching funds from the Vermont Community Broadband Board for their CUD, uh, there needs to be a letter of commitment to the Vermont Community Broadband Board uh, by September of 2022. So. We are a group of volunteers with, with various professional backgrounds. Uh, we have hired consultants. We've been through a, a vetting process, um, an RFP process. Uh, we have the, the, the state, it originally was the Public Service Department, and now it is the Vermont Community Broadband Board that is uh, looking over our shoulder for all the things that we do and all the money that we spend and all of our grant applications, et cetera. Uh, so there, so there, there is that level of oversight. And we are 
mostly working through our consultants. As I said, our design is with NRTC, the National Rural Telecommunications Co-op. They are a national organization. And our internet service provider is going to be Waitsfield Telecom, uh, a longtime telecom and internet provider uh, here in Vermont, uh, South Central Vermont. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, or if I can't answer them, I can I can follow up with answers for you. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what what kind of information you have about the CUDs or what kind of information you have about CV fiber. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm, I'm, curious, about, I'm curious about how um, your organization would make sure that if we, if ARPAHANS did go toward um, this, that it wouldn't be pooled in with other people's funds, that it would be specifically allocated to Woodbury. So I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in two ways. Um, First of all, any, any, any dollar that we don't need to borrow is a savings to our subscribers because the, everything is at cost, right? We're a municipal, a municipal entity. One of the things that we've been thinking about um, a lot is that the, the drops that go from the pole from the, on the street to the home, that installation uh, we we have been thinking about uh, allocating town funds to subsidize the installation in that town. So those installations usually come at a fee. Sometimes it's a hundred dollars. Sometimes it's more. Um, a lot of it depends on how far uh, how how far the the residence is from the distribution pole. But one of the ways that we've been thinking about keeping the money in the town is to use those funds for uh, for these what we call drops, for these installation drops that would otherwise uh, the resident would would have to pay. So that way, that way the the money would stay in the town and it would be a, a direct benefit to the to the to the uh, subscriber and and the resident. My, my question is, if that doesn't really get to the source of the issue, because you're obviously going to have to build out from some hub point, correct, to get service here? Because I'm assuming yes. this will be parallel to the current network that's there, right? So I, I, I think to add on to Laura's question, if they were to give you some ARPA funds in the next 12 to 24 months and, and match this grant, and you have a $50 million problem, um, how are you going to get a system built out to Woodbury to provide service to the clients here in one to two years? Oh, I see. Okay, so we we are that that's 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 a that's a very good question. Let, let me uh, let me clarify. We have a fifty million dollar problem for getting fully built out. Okay, we we don't have anywhere near a fifty million dollar problem to get to the underserved. And our goal is to get to the underserved first. So we we are uh, our, our plans. We have we have uh, instructed the the design team, and uh, and our our approach to all of this is to get the internet to the underserved first. So within within the the first few years. We, we are focusing on those addresses that are underserved. Now, sometimes you have to pass through an area that's served to get to the underserved, but we are, we are not overbuilding cable. We're not overbuilding existing fiber uh, to the extent that we can avoid it. Sometimes, as I said, you need to, to overbuild in order to get where you want to be. Yeah. But, but we, are, we are absolutely focusing Focusing on the on the underserved. Sorry, but the, the you're coming. Where is the hub we're going to be coming from? Because we're a long ways. We're probably close to the end of your build out. I would guess. Um, my yes, concern sir. is is getting. So say it's Barry. So you're 30, 27, 28 miles. Are you going to build 28 miles of uh, 
fiber out to Woodbury to serve 14 customers per se. I don't know how many, you know, for, the, for any money we might get. That's what I'm trying to get. If we were to give you some money, how many customers are going to get served in Woodbury in the next, say, two years, for example? Well, our, our intention is to, ser to get service to those 480, three, there are 410, uh, as, as, I, as identified by the Public Service Department, there are 410 residences or E911 uh, addresses. There are 410 of them that are underserved. And our, our intention is to target those, and we are, we are we're, we're building a ring structure throughout all of our 21 towns. And we have, I don't, I don't remember, and it hasn't been, first of all, it hasn't been fully defined, but um, we are going to be using WEC substations for a large, for, for a large, to a large degree. And I think it's certainly not as far as, certainly not as far as Barry. Um, it may be uh, Cabot or... Worcester, Cabot, Worcester, Callis, maybe some. There, there's definitely, certainly closer uh, than Barry, and, and we, we're 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 building a ring, and of course we're building redundancy into that ring, and we are also uh, adding redundancy by connecting with NEK uh, broadband, which which is all is also up up in that up in that area. So it, it's. It's not quite as if we're coming from a central hub and going out in spokes. We actually have a ring, and we're coming out from the ring towards sure. the outside and towards the inside. Okay. With multiple, uh, multiple hubs that that are along that loop, if you will. But we don't know um, how many you'd serve in the next, say, two years. That's the kind of where I was trying to get at. In town. We, I, I can't say exactly oh, that's okay. how that's many. Fair. That's yeah. fair. I just wanted to know. Okay. Well, I guess some of it would depend on who was interested. Right. I just wanted to know what the answer was because this. <laughs> um, so there, we're, there, we're pretty there, rural, there so there's a lot of streets with very few houses on them. So it's you're going to have a lot of uh, long runs for one or two houses, is what the issue will be. That that that's that's exactly right. I mean, that, that's that is. And what, you know, what, what we understand and the reason we came into being is that, for the most part, that's, uh, that's not a profitable enterprise. Nope, and nope. that's why folks don't have internet today, because it's, it's not profitable to, to, to run uh, so much fiber for so few homes. Right, right uh, next to our and, cell phone. And of course, with, <laughs> with, 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 our, with our topography, you can't get there from here. Right. So, you know, there, there are areas where you, the poles don't continue over the mountain, right. and even though it's 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 only three miles as the crow flies, it's a 15 minute drive, a 15 mile drive. You know that confounds the issue. Yeah. Um, which is why we're extremely fortunate to have grant money uh, to help us lower our subscription rates, uh, and to also to be able to take the opportunity, hopefully, to be able to use low interest loans. Perfect. Thank you. One of my questions sure. was, you know, just in repairs, you know, so you have these one-time funds, the Army fund, whatever. Then how do you, how does this get maintained? You know, it wouldn't be, the town of Woodbury wouldn't be on the hook for maintaining it, correct? Because it's done through Wheatsfield, so it's their organization. I mean, how does, how do repairs happen? Like, Who do they have their own repairs? Yeah. Oh, no, so Wheatsfield is, is uh, expanding their, their enterprise. They, they're, 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 by the time the CUDs um, approach some kind of build out, Waitsfield will have doubled the, the, the size of the area and the people that they're, that they're serving. So they are, they are ramping up. Um, the maintenance costs, of course, are built into the subscription fees. So that's a, that is a, that is a, a, a part of what well, every, everybody pays every month. I mean, in the same way that you do with your with your electric rates, so, you know, maintenance is maintenance is built into that. Uh, we would we would we would do the same 
very much do the same thing. I, I, I don't know exactly where Waitsfield is, is going to uh, build their northern facility, for lack of a better term, um, but it's, it's probably going to be uh, uh, up, in, up in an area where they, can, where they can straddle their responsibilities for NEK broadband and straddle their responsibilities for us on our northern end because they, they're, they're already down there by Waterbury in, our, in the southern end of our of, of where we are, they're very close to Waterbury. Um, so so they, they, will, they will be expanding. So they're going to be using existing poles for the most part, like sort of co-locating with the other services that are provided on the same poles. There's not going to be big, absolutely. There's we'll not going to be, be big we'll towers be. or other big structures that are happening that people might not like in the town. They're, 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 we are focusing on providing fiber that will be hanging on existing poles. Um, we are not looking to build towers to provide Wi-Fi. That, that, that's, that, that's, not, that's not part of our plan. We, we intend to get um, to everyone uh, or as close to everyone as we possibly can um, by, by using existing poles and, and hanging fiber. And we, are, we, and we certainly aren't doing anything like they're talking about in Worcester. And that, that's not, that is not something that we're designing What are they for. doing in Worcester? The, 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 the discussion of putting a 200-foot uh, a tower to- well, We have all those for internet already. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing that. Doesn't work. That, yeah, it doesn't that wasn't very popular recently in yep. Dallas. So that yeah, we have had one for ten, 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's been yeah. ten, It's yeah. never worked well. I never no. used the service, but it's up there still. No, there's uh, there's there's a lot of problems with with anything that that requires some kind of line of sight. <clears throat> right. uh, you're, you're we have, have trees with leaves on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, forgive this question because it's not it's it's going to reveal my ignorance, but. There's been some questions in town about, you know, why why are we going fiber? Isn't aren't things progressing in terms of satellites and other ways to get this kind of service to people? Um, the question is, this seems so sort of, uh, you know, old, antiquated. To like me. a Starlink. Yeah. Just like nice. putting fiber. Right. So, up. so at, at the the. Again, with with Starlink, you you have the line of sight problem, and you and you have uh, weather problems, and with with fiber, you you're not going to get any faster than light. And what we what we have with 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 fiber is 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 an investment in the the hardware, if you will, the fiber itself that that is a is a 50 year investment. And the technology that sends the light through the fiber is is always improving, so that the the amount of information that you can get through the same piece of glass is going to continue to increase over time. So I I I I, I understand your your question, and it's actually a it's actually a very uh, a, a very good question, um, but. I don't. I don't think that's that's going to be the answer for Vermont. I. I unfortunately, it, it would be. It would be. Uh, you know, maybe better if we could. If we were out in Kansas somewhere, um, where all you had to do was look up. But that's that's not our that's not our situation. So. Uh, it's it's the 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 fiber needs to be hung, and then the the software and the technology behind it uh, will continue to increase. And improve. Mm -hmm. any, any other questions? Anybody else? I think we're out of questions. Well, thank you. Well, we I, thank I, you for your time. You know, yeah, I hope this was. Uh, I hope this was worthwhile. It was. And it was informative. Thank you. Hope to be in, hope to be in touch with you more in the future as we as we're as we're moving forward. Very good. And uh, I will log off and uh, let you go on. Thank you. Have a great Thanks night. Again. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Okay.
It's Robin's turn. We have started getting requests in for the absentee ballots for town meeting day. I think I've processed 28 of them so far. Oh, okay. Yeah. Getting them through email requests, plus people walking in asking for them. Yeah. And um, the special town meeting was a learning experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was for a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. No boxing gloves. <laughs> it's good. It was good. And the land record recordings is still coming in on a regular basis. And that's about what I've been doing for the last three weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so people can get in and request an absentee ballot now. Yes. Very good. Okay. And if somebody didn't get you a have, town report you have some, okay. or want an extra copy, we do have extra okay. so they can have a copy. And we also put that on front porch for them today. Perfect. Okay. Right. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. Treasurer. We, the treasurer is not here. I thought maybe they would join us remotely, but um, okay, so not. So I guess we don't have a town treasurer report. Okay, we have a pile of bills to sign, though, so yeah, that's so always we have a, a good pile thing. Of bills, so that must be the bills will get paid. Yeah. All right. I don't need someone breaking my kneecaps. Um, and I don't know if, if you know, oh, probably if Brandy was here, she would bring up this um, this, this, this new quote. So yeah. maybe we could ha discuss that under the. Sure. Why don't we do that? So we have a. What do you call this? Apparently, there's review an estimate to, for our contract. Okay. Yeah. I think this is a just a, a maintenance thing. I yeah. know. Um, last week. It it's what we cold. budgeted, I think. Yeah, I, I was walking by and the thing was making a whistling sound, uh, like a like something was wrong. Okay. And this looks like there was some type of repair. So you got a bill. Okay, this is the estimate for our annual. No, this oh, is no, it isn't. No, it's Sorry. Bill. Yeah, the it's the bill. Fluid level sensor. So it's just a bill we have to pay. Yeah. So but I think. Donnie called down to the office, Donnie Turgeon, the okay. maintenance person at the yep. school and said that Brookfield was there. Oh, okay. oh I see. He so was, it's an estimate to repair. It's an and estimate. And he was wondering how often do they come to do maintenance on... Twice a year. Twice, twice, twice a, year. a year. And then yeah. we're checking it once a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, I, I, so I think last week there was some... Maybe the fluid level was Yeah, so it says estimate to replace fuel fluid level the sensor. sensor, the yeah. Kohler 30RZ. So that's why it was making noise. I okay. Mean, which was the problem... A couple of years ago. Correct. Yep. Same problem. Yep. So I would entertain a motion to get the generator fixed. Make a motion to make the repairs on the generator for fluid levels. Yeah, I'll second that. For five hundred two dollars and twenty three cents. Yeah. Perfect. And and it may be that they've already made the repair. They might. Is that an invoice? It <laughs> sort of looks like an yeah. invoice. Yeah. Well, we'll have them do it anyway. I can't yeah, see. Although what it says estimate. Yeah, though. it does. It's probably not done. So we need to do it anyway. Yeah. All right. Any discussion about it further? Well, we had discussed in the past having a more, a, a more frequent maintenance schedule. Well, and, and we sort of walked away from that yeah. because we thought well, I that thought that's when the fire. Department that's when we decided to have us yeah. do the monthly checks. And so, if the checks were good, yeah, it just we're not going to pick up this. Yeah, it's more the sensor than the, the sensor failure. So it's the levels. sensor failure, right? So yeah. we're never going to even know. Right. Well, so we pick well, it up we'll on the monthly it, check. <laughs> we'll know if it isn't working, and, and yeah. you know if we hear this thing making a sound, that was probably an alarm. You and I heard that. We, we, yeah. yeah, we were there. Yeah, yeah. And we were thinking, oh, it's just cold. It's just making noise. Yeah. It's mad. I was but mad that's too. What it that, was cold. That's out. what that was. I think. So it sounds like this is a repair that just needs to be just made. Just needs to be yes. made. Just the sensor went bad. Yeah. Because so sure we'll that, continue to check it. Um, yeah, I'm sure the fluid level is probably fine. A reasonable it's, agreement. Yeah. It's to check it on a regular basis. The sensor isn't working. So does the fire department check the same thing that Brookfield does? When we just check the, the, the antifreeze and the oil. It's like oh. checking the like antifreeze and the oil in your car. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we're going to look at it. You know, if this buzzer had been buzzing, we would have heard it. Right. And again, like the custodians are going by. Hopefully, they'll, I can't deal with this. They'll, uh, I don't know how people wear glasses with these things. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Don, I mean, obviously Don heard he it. Heard it. So heard it. He heard it. The system worked. It. We picked up the problem. So, yeah. Yeah. But there are repairs that we can't possibly intend to make, and that's why we have Brookfield Service on call. Right. That's yeah. why they do okay. their twice a year check, which they do more checks, and, and okay. then we're, do, we're, doing, we're just doing a, a fluid check, and it's. Yeah, still there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have an annual fee that we pay, and for this anything, twice a year service. Anything, 
above that, like this replacement and repair, that's a, that's an addition yep. to that annual fee. But they would never pick up on that unless it had actually failed. So correct, it's one of those. Right. It's like your it's transmission just, is you know works until it doesn't. You, you got yeah. you know. You so get obviously, light, if you get they light. don't have a monitor system when this right. thing is making a noise. A noise. You probably can buy one, but I don't know if we yeah, want to pay for that. We do have that for. Yeah, I'm sure they have a control that you can garage. connect to the internet. Yeah. You might could consider that. We could. Yeah. We do have to pay for that for monitoring. For but I think that garage. it's a we're aware enough and we're around yeah, right. that thing enough that we you know with regular checks and so I think it worked. There are know, hundreds of kids yeah, at school. Got, Don heard yeah. it. Somebody you know, heard it. Got I, fixed. We heard it. Chris and I heard it too, yeah. but we didn't really know what it was all about. Yeah. <laughs> shut up. It was complaining because it was cold out. Yeah. I did that well, too. Shut up. <laughs> so, well, all right. Alone. So I might as well vote. I'll call the question. All those that say aye. aye Favor aye. say aye. aye. Okay. So um, shall be fixed. Have, is Brandy? Is she in kind of communication? Should we tell her to? to Okay, yes, this? Yeah, she'll be in the office tomorrow. Okay. She came right. back today. You want to tell her? Sure. Yeah, tell her go ahead and get it fixed. Yeah, we should, yeah. as soon as they can okay. fix it. Town meeting reveal. I was at work, so someone can fill me in. Do you want to do the town highway report? Oh, yeah, sorry, Chuck. You're next. No problem. <laughs> Is it 85 there today? Don't tell us. No, actually, uh, you'll feel good. It was only 62. Okay. Yeah. Uh, today. I had 48 on Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, we had a frost Monday and Tuesday morning last week. Yeah, boy. First Just, one they've had in 12 years. Oh, my. They're having special meetings to <laughs> try to deal yeah. with the oranges. Oh, yeah. The iguanas were falling yeah. out of the trees. Yeah. Yeah, they're having a bad orange year yeah. anyway. But, yeah. Um, You'll find a bill in there somewhere. I don't. Brandy knows about it, and she was supposed to have paid Greg back today. <clears throat> the company that we bought the mowing machine for for the loader mm -hmm. has sold out. Uh, uh, of course and they the have. The company that bought them is considering not making that machine anymore. Hmm. <laughs> so Greg and I so talked lucky. it over, and we talked to Brandy about him about getting it paid and everything and we ordered three sets of teeth and they showed up i think he said friday so we have four sets of teeth for that mowing machine now so we should be in good shape mm -hmm. um the total bill was 1600 i think but mm -hmm. if they if they stop making it they're not going to make the teeth and there's other places to get the teeth but they're not exactly the same, and we just figured we'd be better off to do it in one lump sum and have it done with. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Do okay. you do you have a sense of how long those four sets of teeth would last? I guess it depends, depends on how many rocks you hit. Yeah, you're, that's cute. Well, yeah, and the biggest reason we went with these is because it has cutters on both sides. Mm -hmm. So when they get wore out on one side, you take them off, turn them around, put them on the other side, and the only ones that we could find that were anywhere near compatible right now with that machine, they're only one-sided. So in in manner of speaking, we actually have eight sets of teeth. Mm -hmm. We have four set, but there's a tooth on both sides of them. When you wear one side out, you turn it over and yeah, grab a new tooth. So we should be, I would think, for six or eight years, we'd be in good shape. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And um, I've been in touch where I've had three conversations with Dave Upson from Harba, the town manager. Mm -hmm. And we've got it pretty well worked out. Um, we've got to put it on hold until I get back in the spring so we can have a meeting with Woodbury Slap Board, Greg and I, um, Dave, and Tom Fadden, mm -hmm. his road foreman, foreman yep. yeah. so that we can get it set down as to what's going to happen. But the way Dave and I have got it worked out now, that we're going to haul their sand pile on our rainy days. So when we're looking for something for the trucks to do, they can be hauling hybrid sand to offset the hours that, are going, that they put in up in North Woodbury. Mm -hmm. 
and they're going to start keeping log of the hours they do up in West Woodbury so that come springtime we know exactly what we got to do. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. And Chuck, is that specifically going to be for grading or is that for all West Woodbury plowing maintenance? Is, is it plowing too? Just the plowing. We're Just going the to plowing. The grading and the road maintenance. I think we still do the grading and the yeah. graveling. And we had, but yeah. I just was making yeah. sure. Yeah. So Chuck, did Dave, uh, David mention anything about, um, he's, he's talked to me about um, plowing, uh, you know, on the Nichols Pond Road, how they plow to yeah. turn around. He's talked to me about plowing all the way up close to the Cahagan setup um, for a turn right. around there. He wants there. to have the road straightened out so he can plow to the Nichols Dam turn. Right, yep. And I told him that I would talk to the slide board, but I was pretty sure that if he was going to continue to plow it, that we would get it up into shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, we had it's talked about like that a little, little bit earlier. It's benefit to Hedrick and Woodbury with them mm -hmm. having revenue coming in up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for your thoughts on it, I guess. Well, I know we had talked about it a little bit, um, and it definitely is a road that could use some work this coming summer. I mean, there's water that sort of runs right down it um, and, and pretty much ruts it up pretty good for a stretch. Right. Yeah. yeah, and but that's going to take some. Uh, there's going to have to be two or three culverts put in there at least. Okay. To get that water problem gone, mm -hmm. and then it'd probably be a matter of resurfacing the whole road, pretty much whole. Well, not in one year, but over the course of probably three years, we'll have to resurface that pretty much whole length up through there. Mm -hmm. The first year, if we can get it with the net where they don't have trouble plowing it and stuff, it would be a big deal. And then after that, it'll be because Greg and uh, Greg and the boys put in a bunch of three-inch minus up in there, but you can't hone it. Right. That's All that's that's up it. above Cahagan to the ledge. Yeah, which was really yeah. starting to become undrivable when they did that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't grade that stuff. <laughs> no. And actually, from Gahagan's up, as far as the Class 4 road, that's still pretty good. But yeah. from Gahagan's back to the Hardwick Town line, it's bad. it needs some attention. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I, and I know it needs some attention, but I need to get up there to see exactly what I think it needs because mm -hmm. I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't thought about it in the fact that we were going to keep it plowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's pretty much up to you guys what you want to do and how much you want to do to it. Well, I guess w you can discuss that with the new select board in the spring, I guess. <laughs> we'll, we'll have we'll roll one. the dice. <laughs> we'll, we'll have yeah. one former select board member there, but Paul and yeah. I will be gone. Is this your last week? No, next time. Uh, t t town meeting day. Is town meeting day. Till town meeting day. Uh, so we'll oh, have so one. Happy you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have one more meeting the day before town meeting. Yeah. Neither one of you have reconsidered, right? No, I just nope. don't have the time, unfortunately. I know. It, but I haven't had a day off for ten days right now. I I will probably continue as a town highway administrative assistant. So, you know, I'm, and that will be up to the new select board. Um, but, you know, to cover the grants and the grant reporting and, um, you know, stuff like that, I'm, I'm happy to continue with that if the new select board would like me to do that. Um, and you got my vote. You okay. better let him. Yep. Or you'll be doing so, it. Get another vote. Selfish motivation <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> I know what my vote would be. <laughs> It's either and actually not it. being on the select board will allow me to pay better attention to that whole role, which is sort of uh, I haven't had much time for recently. Things are kind of falling by the wayside there. But, um, other than that, I guess that's about all I got. Uh, oh, I can't think of her name right now, but the one that was. So worked up over the cemetery up there across the road from cemetery. She called with a broken mailbox post that Hardwick 
didn't hit, but the snow pushed it over, and I told her that we didn't fix things like that. Majors, majors. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So she was all right with it, so they were going to fix the mailbox post, and I... Okay. Dave and I had already talked about it, so... Okay. Everything's I, good there. Yeah. I know that our road crew, if it was the our road crew that did it, they do sort of have a policy of fixing mailboxes if they if they hang them with the plow. If they hit the mailbox and damage the mailbox, they fix it. But yeah. if the snow, if the post is out so close to the road that just the snow pushes it over, uh -huh. yeah. we don't fix right. it. You need okay. to push your All mailbox right. back. Yeah. So yeah, that's what needs to happen. They need mm -hmm. to set the mailbox back. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got permission to do one on the Scribner Road. It was right out there, so that it got broke off every big storm, and the place just sold. And I get people's not name. It was a lady, and she was getting ready to rent it. And I told her what the problem was, and I asked her if a road crew could go over and move that telephone, that mailbox. <laughs> and she said she didn't care whatsoever. So. I actually sent the town over to move that mailbox out of the way so it wouldn't get broke. Uh -huh. And Greg says now it's working great. So. Okay. And so. was was that the person that was complaining last winter about the mailbox? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But we've mm -hmm. since taken care of that problem. Okay. Great. I guess that's about all I got. All right. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Thanks Chuck. Yeah, you have a good afternoon, a good evening. Enjoy the nice weather. Yeah, take good care. I'm going to. When are you coming back, May? No, I'll be back uh, around the 20th of April. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. I got some work for you, probably. I need done. I'll call you at some point. Perfect. Thank you, Chuck. All right. I'm going to sign off. You guys are all set. Yeah, we are. Fine. Yep. All Thanks, right. Chuck. You See you, Chuck. Time. Where's our camera? See you later, Bob. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I don't know where to wait for you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, town meeting review. Yes. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna have um, a uh, pre-town meeting um, meeting on Saturday, February twenty-sixth. The yep. postcards went out, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and we'll we'll it's gonna be in the town hall. We'll have this uh, remote access <coughs> set up. Um, so help, hopefully that'll help um, people come who don't want to be there in person. Um, and you know this stuff is pretty much uh, the equipment that we got is pretty much set up for use in the town it, hall. Anywhere we want. Just yeah, anywhere it, yeah. we want. It's a little bit small for the gym. Um, at least the monitor, I think, would be um, people. But um, for here, it's. Uh, Kind of fills up the room with equipment, <laughs> but um, yeah. So, but we'll have that set up for the pre-town meeting also. Uh, Robin, do you want to talk at all about the actual voting? Um, Michael, can we just say what time so we have it on the record? I what think time it, it's, we've established? It's Saturday, February twenty-sixth, and we are at ten a.m. Is what we're going to do again, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we thought Saturday would allow. Hopefully, allow more people to. I'm working again. Uh, of course, I work this day. I got to work on the 26. I hope somebody's going to be here. I guess I told you my new job has been dynamic. Yes. I work Saturday, I work Sunday, and I'm working the 26. I think that's. I can't think of anything. And so, how on on um, town meeting day when we're voting, will we be doing voting on school budgets and stuff too? Yes. You'll have both ballots. Okay. Yes. So you'll have those so ballots. So you'll end up having three ballots. Three ballots? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be needing people, like ballot clerks, and then people to go do the counting? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm so wondering the next if, couple of weeks or so, I will be getting a hold of people. Okay. Asking. All right. Call I'm, me. Get ready, everybody. Yeah, Robin's going to be calling. I'm, I'm happy to help, too. Yeah, I'm happy to help as well. One thing I, it would be nice is to contact... OSSU, I'm thinking especially of Hazen. Um, I was a counter there last year, and we got there right after 7 o'clock, and Laura was there too, I believe, um, and we waited almost an hour and a half for Greensboro to show up, and we couldn't start counting until they showed oh up. So we were just sitting around the firehouse, 
And we didn't get done until around midnight. Mm. So they need to make sure that their members are there. I, I would like, yeah. <clears throat> well, it sounds like each town is going to count the ballots, and then the total goes this year. Oh. So you don't have so, to have a, a collective counting? It doesn't sound that okay. way. Okay, well, it was a collective counting last year. Yeah, it was. That sounds really bizarre. Or some yeah, we had yeah. to co-mingle the votes. Yeah. Well, that's that. So we'll be able to count them at the time. That's home. my understanding, yes. Okay, that sounds better. That sounds a lot better. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Uh, midnight yeah. is very late for me. Yeah. And my yes. Kids. I'm ready for bed now. And then um, at the special town meeting that we had, when we voted on our first article, we had 112 voters mm -hmm. sign in. So it was 52 for yes to the Australian ballot mm -hmm. and 53 no to stay as in wow. person. Wow, it was very close, yeah. Yep, yeah. but by the come. end of it, we ended up having 114 voters because two more came in after mm -hmm. we voted on that first article. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So. yeah, and after the first article, some people started leaving. So. Right. Right, um, was, yeah. Okay. And then, you know, just for the record, because um, I think after the second article, um, which also was a, a no vote, um, a lot of people left. And there was another article that we uh, voted on to form a committee with, when the new select board is, is in place. Okay. So I'll pass, because uh, I got an email, and that's what I was going to yeah. ask. Somebody wants yeah. to be on the committee, so I should okay. pass that to the new, new select board. New yeah. select board. That I can do. That um, goes in and the then, select Because, you know, it really... There are good reasons on both sides of the. Um, well, flights. I had five people in my house would all come, but everybody was working. Yeah, so, so we were just not able to be there today. And the fact that it was so close, I think we really need to figure out something that will, you know, address everybody. Um, and that's what this committee um, hopefully will come up with. It and it may be that in the future it would be Australian ballot, and if if we do that, then we really need to figure out a way to make the pre-town meeting um, as very robust. vital and as well yeah. attended as a town meeting. Yeah, because that, that would have been my thing, is if you have a, a live discussion meeting and then you can right. still have an Australian ballot vote, that would kind of And solve. that's that hybrid option that I think Jonah yeah. and some yeah. other people had. Yeah. Which is what I would have voted for, just because I'm getting in a situation now where I have to work you when can. the work happens, right. so I can't always guarantee to be right. there and, and I really Saturday, want to be there. Saturday might be a better day. Yeah. Right. So a traditional time. Because even if you couldn't make the live meeting, it gives you a whole twelve-hour day to go vote. For mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So we're. Well, and or I you think, could even vote ahead of time. Right. You could do your uh, absentee your ballot. Absentee. So yeah, yeah, that's what I. I mean, I would have voted to do that just because it's not that I don't like the meeting. It's just I'm not. Can't guarantee I'm always going to be right. there. Right. And you know there were good good reasoning on both sides of the issue. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, but it seems like it's evenly split enough that it needs to be explored more. Yeah, we more, need to I, we need to figure out a way to. To um, make it work so that we have the most people able to to vote, to, um, and hopefully that would be something would be uh, set up or agreed upon um, by the time town meeting would come in 2023. Three. Which it would still need to be a live vote, right? Because you can't do a... Yeah, we would yeah. still have to have a special town, whatever... Yeah. Or do it at regular town meeting. It just has to be a live vote. Right. We have to be whatever ha whatever yeah. happens is going to have to be a yeah. regular town a regular meeting, meeting for meeting. another yeah. full yeah. calendar year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that was another part of the, the meeting that, um, that a lot of people, I think most of the people who wanted Australian ballot weren't there to hear. Um, so it was get that on the record. So now we have another special town meeting um, that's been, a uh, petition has been for, uh, to vote on the, uh, the firehouse. And I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm wondering, um, first of all, I'm kind of curious to know why this wasn't on the articles for the, um, for this year. Um, and then the other is, um, is what year, what fiscal year um, is the fire department thinking about? Because um, we've already made a budget for fiscal 20, year 23. So I'm just wondering, um, is that the year that you're thinking of um, for the first expenditure? Or is it the following fiscal year? 
That all depends on how fast everything moves, right? Well, I, I think, in fairness to the town, it would have to be the following year, to be honest with you, because right. you've already, you've already, you're going to have already voted on the budget mm -hmm. by the time the special meeting happens. Yes. So I don't see how you can recycle unless you have a whole other special town meeting to reapprove. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to mention that to people in this town. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So are, well, <laughs> in, in, the, in the way, because what we would have to do is go out and get the get the financing, and then you you won't owe anything until you start spending it. And so, like, the payment probably wouldn't even come due till the following year. Right. Okay. It would have to be a two-year cycle. Because yeah. if, if they approve it, you'd have to go in and get permits and all your final designs. It could be months okay. before you're in construction. It just, right. yeah, more than likely would be. So I wonder... Um, can, in the special meeting, could we amend this to say fiscal year 24? Is that a possibility? I don't think we can do that. Oh, somebody else. Sounds like a dog. I bet it's one of Diana's dogs. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> we were just wondering who was. Oh, you had a hairball. <laughs> I don't, I don't think we can commit a future town meeting. Oh. I unmuted myself because I have a question, but I didn't see a place to raise my hand, oh. so I raised my hand. Yep. What are you talking about? So, uh, we, we have just received uh, a petition uh, from the fire department, or, or organized by the fire department, um, for a special town meeting to vote on um, financing um, the new fire station. So, um, and I can't we've lost your voice, Diana. Oh, she, she said thank you. So. Oh, okay. So we don't. <laughs> thank have you. So, so I, I could read that to you. Um, no, it's a, that's it's fine. Essentially the same it article. Dollar amount. I'll see it. Well, it's, um, it says, "Shall I'm going to read it? Shall the town <laughs> appropriate up to eighty-five thousand dollars to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department, Incorporated, for the purpose of financing the cost?" for construction of a new fire and emergency operations center at a total cost of one million three hundred thousand dollars. So, um, and we were just talking about, um, you know, what fiscal year that um, first um, appropriation would be budgeted under, and, um, and it sounds like it would be fiscal year 24. Um, and then, um, would this be something that you would put on the agenda each year for a certain we'd appropriation? Have we'd have to because we can't okay. commit future town meetings. The, only, right? way, the okay. only way this can be a one and done is if the select board decided to build the building and, and it. lease it or something along those okay. lines. Okay. So that's what we East Mark Pillar did. We have to do this every single, every single year. year. Right. Okay. All right. Does it say for how many years? It for doesn't. No. It, um, like Chance just said, this would be an article that would probably be on the town warning, meeting warning, we had to take every the 20 year. year, language 20 year? Off. We had to take the 20 year language off because oh. we're committing to future town meetings. Right, we can't commit. Oh. So we have to come back for 19 more years if this got approved. We have to come back 19 more years asking the same question yeah. every single year. And hopefully it goes through. Yeah, just like we do with our truck financing. Yeah, yeah right. so no. it'll be just like. But you're still thinking it's going to be the 20 years even though you had to take that language out of there. Well, it will be 20 years. It's a 20 year construction loan. Right. Right. Yeah, it's a bond, yeah. That's the, that was the concern that we had when we first talked about this, was that, you know, that we have to, if, if we commit to it, we're... You're committing. We're committing. Yeah, because they'll come take know. it back, and they'll have a... Because then we're in real trouble. trouble. If we don't vote on it... Yeah, then the fire department... The is, fire department well, is really... It's been saying for years, because every yeah. time we do a vote for a truck... It's the same thing. It's the same thing. If you say no next year, then what do we do with the trucks? Well, the same back. thing we do with the fire station. They come take it. Uh, it's not. It's not ours. It for. It. Yeah. So that's unnerving in a way. It is, because all it takes is a, is, is a change in the direction of the wind of the voters, and yep. all of a sudden you don't have funding for things. One no vote, and there's no funding. Yeah, it's just like all of our funding, though. Yep, that's all of our funding. Yep. So, Which Paul, can you use awesome. your iPhone to remind me of just how? I know there's like. You have to warn it. For Six, we have 60 days because we were okay. just chatting about trying to push it into April. Just try to. Uh -huh. I, I think our thought is to do a live meeting. Mm -hmm. If everybody. We have to. We, well, there's no. Yeah, no yeah, way. yeah that's because we, we think people want to be able to discuss this. We don't want to go down. That's the, the answer to your question as to why we didn't do it before was we want to have a live meeting. Live meeting, yeah. And I didn't want to get caught in the whole uh, Australian ballot thing again. Mm -hmm. um, so we can push this out into April. Okay. So it sounds like this could be something that the new select board. Well, I'd like us to schedule it because we're okay. here. We had. All right. Okay. 
Um, so where does that work if you guys start it off and you select where to come in? They, I mean, they, how does that work? Well, because it has to be it has to be warned anyway. We, it isn't our discretion as to whether it gets warned or not. It's any select board, no matter what its makeup. We'll have to be. It, I mean, it's warned right. because it's a petition. It. it has to. They have. We have to put it on. So I don't see any reason we can't just schedule the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the future select board will have to still. They'll still work within, the, within those, you know, we have to yeah, honor that's, it. That's all okay. Vermont statutes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter who's on the board, it's the board. Okay. Right. That was a concern because some thought the board was pushing like the, the Australian ballot thing, and I had to keep telling me, it was like, oh, it was a petition. It was a petition. We just have to yeah. schedule the meeting. That's Which all actually, life. actually, Brandy brought up very right. nicely at yep. the town meeting. Yep. You we know, didn't do but it. It wasn't, it wasn't the choice of the select board. It no, was, we didn't have a choice. We didn't have a choice. Once it so once it, to the schedule. So we can push it out into April because we have 60 okay. days to schedule the meeting. I think the warmer the weather, um, the more attendance we're going to have, and the easier it's going to be to work. How about April 20? We could do it on a Saturday again, April 23rd. I think I we should that do it one's, on a Saturday. I agree that one's open Saturday. for Are me. Are you going to be here that day? I'm open right now, and if I <laughs> if I schedule it right now, it will be open. <laughs> All right, hang on to April 27th. Let's do that. Yeah, the three before that, I'm teaching at Fire School in Morrisville. The three before that. Okay, so April, April 20. No, April, April 23rd. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. And it needs to be worn 30 days ahead. Is that I true? believe so. Okay, yeah. That's all in statute too. So. And it gets us time to get out and right. do our and thing. beat the bushes a little bit, mm -hmm. which you didn't get to do last year, which is unfortunate because a lot of the comments we got was not of information, but we couldn't do any information last year. We, we started the whole we thing. We had one person come to the fire station, right. which was frustrating because you send that stuff out and nobody calls. You know, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We really want people to call, and if they've got questions and. Today, my service guy was out there for five hours at five degrees servicing the broken truck outside, mm. which is not ideal. That'll probably cost us because we yeah, can't. The station roof. Charge you for frostbite. Right? Well, the station yeah. roof's not high enough to service the truck. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I'm not right when I'm right here, special. Okay, so um, do do I guess we should vote on that. We should vote on that. Yep. Okay. Do you need to set a time, or does that come? Well, let's, let's do it at 10 o'clock. Let's do yeah, 10 a.m. again. 10 was good. Yeah, 10 seems to work fairly well. Yep. So, would I you agree, Miss Turkey? I mean, that I mean, yes. it gave us enough time to get things together. Yep. And have people come in a little bit late and still have That's everything set up. Yep. And, uh, and we'll yeah. be. Oh, you see my Saturday. Morning. Yeah. I'm going to say yeah. that you can start registering at 9:30. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. That will help. That will help. Because we just didn't get an opportunity to get out last year because of COVID, and that's part of what hurt, because it's just we're hoping to be able to do that this year. Yeah, no outreach is tough. Right. So I'll make a motion that we schedule the special town meeting to consider the funding um, for the f uh, new fire station or the new, um, let's, let's make it official here, um, fire the new operations. fire and emergency operations center um, on April, Saturday, April 23rd, beginning at 10 a.m. in the school gym. School gym, yep. Yeah. And I'll second that motion. Is there more discussion? Hearing none, I'll have the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Anything else with any of the town meetings that we've... <laughs> you've answered all the questions I had. Just all three of them. You mentioned earlier that there was 112 people that came to the special town meeting and then it, it, it finished with 114 total. Yes. What did we, know, what did we used to have pre-COVID on town meeting day? About... I don't Somewhere know. in that neighborhood. Anna, do you know the answer to that? I it's about it's half. Similar. It's, it, it, it's, on, it's, it's a little less. <laughs> I did figure that out recently. In the last five years, it was approximately 100. Yeah. So so we're aware about one year when we only had 80 or so, but there were also years when we had 120. So. Yeah, I hope we keep visiting that issue. I, I, I agree. really was not happy that I couldn't come, and I uh, really no, wanted yeah, to that's wait. That's reasonable. It, but, but yeah, the, I mean, it looked like a regular I have to take a test in two months, and if I missed eight hours of class, I'm not going to be right. It looked like it was about normal, but so I'm sitting home in team's hell. I also was working that day. He was working, it, my wife was working. It, it was, it was, I would say it was well attended. Yeah. Yeah. yeah For yeah. a Woodbury meeting, yeah, because that's about what I remember. I think the that's high right. watermark may have been in the 160s at one point, but. I'd say it was well attended. Wasn't a whole lot of space left in the gym. It's a good subject to be there, I guess, and that helps. <laughs> or some kind of controversy. All right. Other follow ups in business? Um, we got ARPA. Yeah, so we have a couple of folks from the ARPA committee here. I thought we would just 
You just hear or just that you have a meeting coming up? A couple or? nights from now. Wednesday night. Okay. Yeah. 16th, right? Yeah. And they're going to be able to use our, yep. our Zooming yep. equipment. I will be there as the technician to... Uh, Thank you. I'll be there as well. You don't need my help with that stuff. Engaged. I can run Zoom and, and it depends on how many people actually log in right. remotely. They might all have to be muted. And if they have a question, put it in the chat, and mm -hmm. I'll make sure that's passed. We, we could maybe go f over that right at the beginning, if we, especially. Yes. Right. So right at the moment for this meeting, um, Tegan is, we have a, a actually, that's something. If you right. go on the leagues of cities and towns, there's an actual thing. Uh, unless you, can, you all right. are going to just do it. So well, just so you know, I set up the Zoom so that people okay. were muted upon entry. Good. Okay. So okay. then, and I also, and on the announcement, it says all to direct all questions to the chat. So exactly. good, perfect. Yep. Okay. And then, as long as there's a moderator, yep. it's easy. Yep, and we just yep. want to record it. That's the other So, I should back up. Do you need me to run the Zoom? Yes. I can't run the Zoom. Well, this is what we're doing tonight. Um, this, this is our test. This is designated to all of this equipment. And Tegan, <coughs> we, have, we have we had to acquire a new laptop. That's something I probably should Is that what mentioned. this is? This is my laptop. Okay, you've got a new That's one. That's the new one. That's our. We laptop. have screen envy, by the way, because you have two screens. Right. <laughs> and Tegan, Tegan, um, and I actually was able to monitor it too. But um, so that the idea was, um, especially, and this will be more important when there, if there are a lot of people, there were were not a lot t tonight. But um, so this is pretty much designated to run the equipment, and then. Um, Another person um, tonight, it, it's Tegan, was kind of watching the participants, like, like if somebody new showed up mm -hmm. um, and the person doing that, I'll actually just kind of be sitting there. So I could probably do this part two um, of monitoring um, the people that come in. Because um, once this is all set up, I don't really have much to do unless the, unless the mics breaks. aren't working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do someone just needs to do it, whether it's you or Michael. Yeah, and you, we could we could both do it. Actually, I can make you a co-host. Uh, um, or actually, you would have to make. How's that going to work? You you're going to have to be made the co-host. Did you set the Zoom account up to use co-hosts? Yes. The, the all Zoom all Zoom meetings have there's that have an option. Um, yeah. It's the per I would probably actually start the meeting um, and setting it up. I would actually be opening up the meeting. What time did you set the meeting to start at? Six o'clock. Okay. I'll come whenever you need. Probably um, I should just watch you and learn. Okay. How to set, you know, how, how the equipment works. Yeah. yeah. He says you could help him clean this up tonight, and that would help. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things you, I was going to suggest, and for the new board, if they're going to do this moving forward, is the leagues of cities and towns on their website has a one-page thing that I read on our meetings that I do for the mutual aid system. Um, when you get a lot of folks coming to your meetings, a lot of outside public with diverse opinions and views, once in a while you'll get uh, people that try to sabotage your meeting. So right. it's a blurb that you read, which tells people that if you're not on the agenda, you can speak in the public comment section. You get two minutes. Um, everyone needs to identify themselves. So, for example, we had somebody put pornography on the screen one time through the meeting. Um, this is what you got to. This is why you read this. And if someone won't identify themselves or who they are, they'll get. They, you have to boot them out. You're gonna. You read all this stuff in beforehand. And if there's one number, so I would suggest do that. But mm -hmm. uh, I've had to learn to manage one of these meetings. The the hard way. So did the state house. Yeah. He, so so the well. the co-hosts have the ability to. Uh, shut off and screens. shut off. Yeah, but whoever. sometimes it's too late. Probably, well, we just, homeschoolers and I, we just did a big meeting where 200 yeah. homeschoolers were in on the Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. We shut all their cameras yeah. down. Cut the cameras. The mics are off. But again, so, what it does is gives yeah. the, the rule. So it says things like, if you don't speak out if you want to, what you've already started, but it, you read it right in the beginning. So you can look on the league and see if that's something you want to use. And I would suggest to the new board, Chris, I agree. you do the same thing so you don't get your meeting right. hijacked. So we'll get that together. Because yep. yep. it happens all the time. Because having gone to meetings where there's maybe 100 people in it and a lot of outside, it can get a little dicey. Mm -hmm. can, can you 
find that? Is it easy to find? I can probably find it again. I have it in my stuff. At, no, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it. yeah, it's right in the league. You can't. Yeah, I have you it. Have to do. You really? It's on my. Uh, it's on my computer. Yeah. 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 You can't. You can't miss it. Yeah. If you I, just look I, through I the actually found details. it there because I think you mentioned this at a past meeting. Yeah. Thing, it's I, really wise to do because it, it lays it the ground. Like it didn't quite pertain to us because. Yeah. More I mean, about what you would do is use what you're going to use, but what it would do is set the ground rules for people. And just their understanding that you won't, you'll be removed from the meeting if you're unruly, mm -hmm. if, you, if yeah. you start, up, you know, taking off with your meeting, for example. And one of the things that we found out this evening is that you know there's three laptops here. Yeah, you got to shut all the mics they, off. They have to be muted yeah. because um, you know the, you'll the get audio is actually going. Yeah, there was it was kind of interesting to listen to, but <laughs> not helpful. But, yeah, yeah. Town hall renovations. Yes, yeah, so um, the we have scheduled um, the the uh, closure of the attic um, with the bad excluders. It's it's uh, the schedule as it is now is March 31st, and we got uh, um, you know somebody communicated with Fish and Wildlife and the little brown bats, the which are uh, endangered species, but that's the main resident up there. <laughs> um, they're not there right now. Um, but they tend to show up um, as soon as it kind of warms up in the spring, like early April. So we're a little worried that if we have an early spring that they might be back. We've um, had some warm days, so that means we'll be punished in March. Right. You're probably right. <laughs> we will. <laughs> it's yeah. the second and third week of March will be cold and snowy. So we'll probably see if they could, they said that, you know, they kind of wanted to wait until it was a little bit warmer to do the work, but you know, it would have been easy to do the work last week. Yeah. Um, or next week it's supposed to be warm right, next week yeah. too. So, so Thursday is supposed to be 50. Uh, rain on Thursday. Yeah. So we'll probably contact them again um, and see if they could come earlier. Um, and we, I think, um, somebody on the committee has contacted Jen Lewandowski. Is that true, Diana? Yeah. She's we nothing yeah. yet. So um, so he'll. I'm not sure when he's coming. Um, I think sometime in earlier in March. Okay. Yeah. And I contacted um, the contractor that's, that did the uh, energy audit for the town office, mm -hmm. and he said that he would do um, the town hall also. Uh, and then I sent him an email about, well, when do you want to do it? And I haven't heard back from him, so I'll probably ask him again um, maybe tomorrow. Um, so we've got things kind of lined up to get stuff started. and. Um, and I know that we're kind of curious, um, you know, with the ARPA informational meeting, uh, how much of what's happening, you know, what we're thinking of for the town hall would qualify for ARPA funding. I mean, the, the reason that we're, I mean, it, the town hall needs to be fixed up anyway, um, but a big part of the why we're, this has kind of inspired us to do this now is that that really probably will be our main <coughs> meeting place going forward. Um, I wrote to Katie about this yesterday mm -hmm. um, from Motley to City Town. She did say that it doesn't matter about the ownership issue. That was something that mm -hmm. has come up is, mm -hmm. you know, does it matter that it's not owned by the town? She said that that's not an issue. And she said that renovations to a town hall are right in keeping with the ARPA fund mm -hmm. guidelines. Okay. That was her answer. Yeah, it is a strange deed. Um, we own it. It's just it has a deed restriction. It has a deed restriction. Yeah, we have to. We own the town hall. I, I I characterized it for her that um, it's owned by somebody else, but that as long as the town is using it, it's. Right. Well, what did we have the deed that has the town of Woodbury on it as mm -hmm. the owner of the building and the land? What it just says is if we don't use it, it would revert. Right. So as long as we maintain ownership and use, so we own she it. She seemed to indicate that that wasn't okay. that would apply as an issue to the situation. Diana had her hand up to probably add to that. It's the it's the land that's under right. a perpetual lease. Mm -hmm. uh, the build there's no question about the building ownership. Okay. Um, the town built it be actually before the lease was signed in 1842. A couple days ago. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> um, Hasn't been a problem for 180 years so, so. far. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be interesting to ask them. You know, it, d does it matter what the renovations are? Is it have to? You know, mm -hmm. I, it sounded to me like as long as you're renovating to the point where you, it can be used effectively, right? But that's that's all covered. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a lot of things to. 
that one. Right. A lot of, uh, you know, things that to spend on and not mm. as much money as you. Right. Yeah, I've checked in every town. It's the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah our, our pot of money will. Yeah. There's towns that have $2 million, they have the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> you just have bigger and bigger bills. Mm -hmm. I think as, as the ARPA committee would love to hear from the town more about what their priorities are, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get a read from the townspeople. And mm -hmm. so we're going to put together, we have put together a survey mm -hmm. um, and just trying to gather more information about what people think mm -hmm. or would they like the money to go because mm -hmm. we, can't go, we can't go everywhere. So. Right, yeah. All right. Anything okay. else on town hall or any other updates? Um, I don't have. Do you have anything else on the town hall, um, Diana? So we can get to start signing oh, bills. Okay. No, I guess we're. Well, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, I make a motion that this select board adjourn its meeting. And I'll second the motion to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. We are adjourned. <laughs>